Welcome to the Henry George Day Devotional, episode 37. We continue with book 3, chapter 1, uh, the inquiry near to the laws of distribution, necessary relation of these three. Um, and we decided that uh, we like the law of rents, George and I, and you, and all people who love what is good and true. Um, but one of the other one, the law of wages was wrong, and so also our, was the law of interest. Um, and so George is going to explain to us more about that. Here we go. With profits, this inquiry has manifestly nothing to do. We want to find what it is that determines the division of their joint produce between land, labor, and capital. And profits is not a term that refers exclusively to any one of these three divisions. Of the three parts into which profits are divided by political economists, namely compensation for risk, wages of superintendence, and return for the use of capital, the latter falls under the term interest, which includes all the returns for the use of capital and excludes everything else. Wages of superintendence falls under the term wages, which includes all returns for human exertion and excludes everything else. Compensation for risk has no place whatever, as risk is eliminated when all the transactions of a community are taken together. It's an interesting claim. I sort of remember this. Um, I wonder. I don't know if he goes much into this, but let's see. Like the weather. I guess. I guess in the economics term of risk. I don't know. That one I won't explain more. I shall, therefore, consistently, consistently with the definitions of political economists, use the term interest as signifying that part of the produce which goes to capital. To recapitulate... Land, labor, and capital are the factors of production. The term land includes all natural opportunities or forces, such as the waters, the electromagnetic spectrum, minerals, and other things found in the earth. Um, the term labor, sun, solar energy. The term labor it means all human exertion. And the term capital, all wealth used to produce more wealth. In return, wealth again is uh, things made from the land that have value to people, basically, from what I recall. In returns to these three factors is the whole produce distributed. That part which goes to landowners as payment for the use of natural opportunities is called rent. That part which constitutes the reward of human exertion is called wages. This is if you're ever in another conversation with other people, this is like economic rent versus when you, you know, rent a car. The part which constitutes the reward of human exertion is called wages. And that part also, when you pay rent for your house, uh, it's partly for the land and it's partly for the structure. So that is also... Uh, a point of issue when you're discussing rent with all of your economics PhD friends. That part which constant which you know your economics PhD friends, if they don't know about George, they probably got some screwy ideas. That part which constitutes the reward of human exertion is called wages, and that part which constitutes the return for the use of capital is called interest. Yes, we're repeating ourselves. These terms mutually exclude each other. The income of any individual may be made up of from any one, two, or three of all these sources. That's the total income for an individual, not their wages, their income. But in the effort to discover the laws of distribution, we must keep them separate. Let me premise the inquiry which we are about to undertake by saying that the miscarriage of political economy, which I think has now been abundantly shown, 
can, it seems to me, be traced to the adoption of an erroneous standpoint. Yes. Uh, right. If the premises are flawed, even if uh, your reasoning is valid, you may end up at an erroneous standpoint. Living and make, although if you have flawed premises and flawed reasoning, you may still end up at the right place. Living and making their observations in a state of society in which a capitalist generally rents land and hires labor, and thus seems to be the undertaker or first mover in production, the great cultivators of the science, have been led to look upon capital as the prime factor in production, land as its instrument and labor as its agent or tool. This is apparent on every page. In the form and course of their reasoning, in the character or of their illustrations, and even in their choice of terms. Everywhere capital is the starting point, and the capitalist the central figure. So far does this go, that both Smith and Ricardo use the term natural wages to express the minimum upon which laborers can live, whereas, unless injustice is natural, all that the laborer produces should rather be held as his natural wages. This habit of looking upon capital as the employer of labor has led both to the theory that wages depend upon the relative abundance of capital and to the theory that interest varies inversely with wages. While it has led away from truths that but for this habit would have been apparent. In short, the misstep which has so far which so far as the great laws of distribution are concerned um, so the misstep that has led political economy into the jungles instead of upon the mountaintops was taken when adam smith in his first book left the standpoint indicated in the sentence the produce of labor constitutes the natural recompense or wages of labor yes adam smith forgot his own sentence to take that in which capital is considered as employing labor and paying wages but when we consider the origin and natural sequence of things this order is reversed the capital instead of first is last instead of being the employer of labor it is in reality employed by labor there must be land before labor can be exerted and labor must be exerted before capital can be produced. Capital is a result of labor and is used by labor to assist it in further production. Labor is the active and initial force, and labor is therefore the employer of capital. Um, quick side note: like you wouldn't have, like if we never like invented money, and you couldn't like front people money, and you didn't have to like think in that way I don't think people would have gotten this as confused and this I think is why some who was talking to me about some economist who just maybe it's even just Marx I don't know my I have a socialist Marxist -y friend and I believe he was telling me he just wants to get rid like one of the objectives of Marx was to get rid of money um and I think that would help clear up some of these uh, confusions, but money is a very helpful kind of capital. Um, like I mean, like literal currency to trade with so that you can facilitate trade much more easily. Um, anyway... Labor can be exerted only upon land, and it is from land that the matter which it transmute into wealth must be drawn. It is, it is unfortunate, well, not, like we live in such a service-based society now that sometimes some of this isn't precisely true. Like, well, no, here, I don't give him enough, like you can't perform a service except in a physical space, uh, which is land. I mean, even, uh, yeah, like people, people want to just keep, keep talking about remote work being non-land dependent. 
I mean, that's not exactly true. You're still using up an office in your house, and you're still requiring the use, well, it's enabled by capital, certainly, through computers and infrastructure. Um, but a lot of the, like, if you think of the telecommunications service, is super land dependent, which you're utilizing. Um, you know, the internet doesn't just, you know, uh, start, just doesn't just, like, you don't just teleport your, your, thoughts and your from one location to another we have infrastructure um anyway land therefore is the condition precedent the field and material of labor the natural order is land labor capital instead of starting from capital as our initial point we should start from land the other point people make about remote work is like see land's just not a big deal anymore because everyone can work remotely Everyone of a certain class can work remotely, but the huge majority of low-wage workers absolutely has to be uh, localized. And again, I just want to push back a little bit. Like, yes, I would say that uh, our ability to, to do remote work has enabled us to utilize land more efficiently and land for those purposes spatial land is not quite as important that has to it's like yeah I concede that <clears throat> but land as you can read in Lars Doucet's article is still a big deal uh, outside of even the fact that some segment of our population can work remotely there is another thing to be observed capital is not a necessary factor in production bum, bum, bum. labor exerted upon land can produce wealth without the aid of capital and in the exist in the necessary genesis of things must so produce wealth before capital can exist therefore the law of rent and the law of wages must correlate each other and form a perfect whole without reference to the law of capital as otherwise these laws would not fit the cases which can be readily um, which can readily be imagined and which to some degree actually exists in which capital takes no part in production and as capital is as is often said but stored up labor it is but a form of labor, a subdivision of the general term labor, and its law must be subordinate to and independently correlate with the law of wages, so as to fit cases in which the whole produce is divided between labor and capital, without any deduction for rent. To resort to the illustration before used, the division of the produce between land, labor, and capital must be as it would be between Tom, Dick, and Harry if Tom and Dick were the original partners and Harry came in but as an assistant to and share with Dick. Harry would be the capital in this uh, triplet. All right, uh, that concludes chapter one of book three.